Hey everybody. All right, so now we're going to start examining some of the code that you were provided. And we're also going to present a couple different ways that you can use to figure out what your app is doing at some point in time and understand a little bit about what the code is doing, right? And, and how it works together. So I've got my starter code open. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here into the app source main directory and open up this file called mainactivity.kt. Now in Android, an activity is something that the user interacts with. It's a screen in the app. So you probably use apps on either iOS or Android. Whenever you're interacting with the app, that might have multiple screens, like a settings page, a couple of different uh, you know, pages that correspond to things you can do in the app. Each one of those in Android corresponds to a single activity. So now when we start looking at this code, there's going to be, you know, there's a lot of commentary. There's a lot of existing code. We're using some unfamiliar libraries and concepts, but this is code that you should feel fairly comfortable with because as far as the Kotlin idioms and ideas in here, these are things that we've talked about. So for example, here's our declaration of the main activity class. We see that it extends a class called app compat activity. This is the, um, the super class that's provided by Android that establishes sort of what's called the activity life cycle, which we'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Um, and then we're also implementing an interface. We'll talk about that in, in a second as well. Um, so we've tried to provide a lot of like really detailed commentary about the code so that you can understand what's going on and have some sense of, of what's happening. But feel free to ask about this. Questions about the starter code are always completely okay to, to ask. Um, you know, there's no, there's no cheating if we're talking about the starter code and what, what it's doing. And we can certainly clarify things on the help site or on the forum. So, so don't be afraid to ask. Okay, so what I wanna start with is the beginning. Let's start with the first thing that happens when the app is created, and that's that this method. So first of all, the main activity in this case, and this is common in Android, the main activity is the screen that's shown when the app launches. Now, we're gonna add an activity later to the app in order to achieve, add a particular feature. But for right now, our app has one activity. There's one screen that's created um, when the app starts up. So if you wanna follow along, have an emulator ready because I'm gonna go ahead and run the app in the emulator. Um, and then we're gonna kind of give it a sense of like, what is it, oh, where'd it go? Um, I think the emulator tab will open when it's ready. Ah, there it is, cool, okay. So you'll see what happens when the app runs. So the app that we've given you already kind of works a little bit. When it starts up, um, it displays a map. If I zoom out, you'll can see, you can also see that there are markers on the map. So the code that we've given you is doing something. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why it's doing this particular thing. Uh, let me make this a little bit smaller, make this a little bit smaller, just so we can see Kotlin code is a little wider than Java. So uh, I think this will do the right thing if I just, yeah, okay. Sweet. Um, all right, so what's happening here? So, so one thing that's really important that we need to figure out how to do when our app runs in the emulator is essentially the equivalent of system.out.println. This is a common tool that developers use to figure out what is happening um, in a particular part of the code. So let's do that. Um, what happens, well, the equivalent of Kotlin is, um, uh, I'll, I'll call this entering on create. So you might wonder like, what happens if I just use println, right, in Kotlin? Um, and what happens if you use println, sorry, these are annoying, uh, that, that, that's shown when there's trailing white space, but it's, it's ignorable. Um, all right, so let's rerun the app. But then there's this question of where do these messages actually show up? And to see these messages, what we wanna do is go down here to the bottom and open up what's called the log cat tab. Um, and that is, uh, that, that's what's gonna allow us, hold on a second, let me make sure that, I'm just gonna double check and make sure that you can see uh, my emulator, I, I think so. Okay. Um, so the, the logcat tab down here is showing us the logging messages that are being generated by our app. So I'm gonna restart this um, and it's gonna ask me if I wanna do it in a particular way, I'm just gonna say terminate. And now if I look here and I say entering, you'll see that this message is being displayed in the output. Uh, you'll see that these, these are shown every time you start and end, like if you're rerunning the app multiple times, but you can see that this entering on create uh, message was shown, but it was shown with the tag of system.out. 
And so if you just use Printlin in your Android code, this is what will happen. Um, Normally what we do in Android is we use a slightly more sophisticated message uh, mechanism called uh, logging, right? And the idea with logging is that it allows us to establish multiple levels. Uh, well, there's two things that logging does that, that Printlin doesn't. First of all, it allows us to establish a level. So in this case, I'm logging this at the informational level. So there's different log messages. There are like warnings, which are pretty important. That's at a high level. And then there are debugging messages and verbose messages and trace messages, and those are at lower levels. And so the idea is that by selecting the level that I want to view in this display, I can potentially be able to see more important messages and hide less important messages or see less important messages along with everything else. Um, so I'm logging this at the informational level that's kind of in between debug and, and warning. Um, and then it also allows me to associate a tag with the message. So the tag is just a string, but that allows me to organize things a little bit. So if I want to see all the messages that are generated by a particular component or a particular part of my app, I can use the same tag, and this can be any string. I'm using this predefined tag that we created for you up here, but there's no reason that you couldn't use anything else. Um, all right, so let's rerun this, um, and I'll tell it to terminate again. And now you'll see that it's, uh, I, I still see entering, right? Um, but it's being, Let's see here, I don't see the, oh, okay, there we go, yeah. So the, so the tag is this long thing. I actually think this is, uh, this is a mistake in the starter code that I will fix. Let's try this again, uh, hit terminate. There it goes, so now it's just main activity. So that's the tag that's being used uh, for, for, this particular, uh, for this particular activity. So now I see this on create message. And so if I wanted to see like all the tags from the main, act, all the output from the main activity, I could just do this and now I'm, there's a lot of logging that's generated by Android and I'd be able to zero in and see just, just a, a component of it. All right, so now in this on create method, this is almost like a constructor for your app. This is run once. And so this typically does a lot of setup um, in order that's required in order to get the app to work. Um, and so there's commentary here that should be pretty helpful to figure out what's happening. Um, but you can try kind of experimenting with, with this code and see what happens, like removing pieces of it. So um, we're using um, OpenStreetMaps and to avoid placing more load on the public OpenStreetMaps servers that provide what's called tile information for maps, which is the background tiles that have information about like road names and things like this, right? It's essentially like the, the map information that we're gonna put our overlay on top of. Um, so we've set up our own tile server to avoid using the OSM Droid ones because, or so the OpenStreetMap public ones because those get a lot of usage. Um, so here's where that tile source is being configured. Now, if I remove it, what's gonna happen? Well, let's see. So if I remove it, what we see is that there's no mapping information shown but what's interesting is the markers are still there. So the map still exists, like we're still able to, there, there is a map there, but there's no like map background. There's no, you wouldn't be able to identify where you are necessarily, right? Because you can't see landmarks, you can't see streets, stuff like that, right? So here's an example of the type of thing that you can do as you're experimenting with this is, is change these things, right? So let's try, so this sets the zoom that's used when the when the uh, app starts up for the first time. Let's set this to a, right now this is pretty zoomed in. And so you'll see that like when, and, and this is a little confusing because when the app starts, it's like you're so zoomed in that you're just seeing like a tiny little part of a road and you might not wonder like, what's, you might wonder like what's going on here. Um, let's set this to be something a little small. Um, so smaller zoom values are more zoomed out, larger ones are more zoomed in. The default I think was 17, so this will be smaller. This will start with the map more zoomed out, and now, okay, so now we can see the whole area, and this is a little more recognizable immediately as Champaign-Urbana. All right, so now I want to talk through a little bit about what's happening when the app starts up, and we'll use this logging capability to, to get a sense of what's happening. So I've got a log here in, on create. Now there's another, what's called lifecycle method used by Android called onResume. So onCreate is called once when the app starts up, like it's not running and then it, you click on it in a menu or it starts up for some reason. And that will take us to the main activity. And, and this is being called on the main activity because that's the activity that's configured to start up when the app is launched. Now, 
when the user returns to the app, let's say you put it in the background or hide it in some way and then you come back to it, there's this other method that's called, which is called on resume. So I'm gonna put a log message here, uh, let's say entering on resume. Oh, I'm writing job code. All right, so let's rerun the app. Um, oh, it doesn't like something. Oh, I forgot a tag. There we go. Yep. And and so this is one of these examples where, just let me show you. So like if you were just seeing this, it would say compilation error seed log for more details. If you click up here, um, usually there'll be more, more details. For example, this has a line number on it, right? Well, we have a lesson about how to deal with errors in Android Studio, but a lot of times like you end up with too zoomed in. In, in the error message um, dialogue here. I wanna click on the whole thing and then this would have taken me right to the right line. I already fixed it, but uh, th this is the way to, to, to kind of do that effectively. All right, so I'm gonna re restart it. And now I'll open up my logcat thing again. And now I see entering on create, entering on resume. So on resume is the second method that gets called on my activity when it starts up. Now what's happening here is that the activity starts up, it loads the map and then it's retrieving a list of places from a server to show on the map. This can be a slow process. In fact, it is a slow process. When I, when I uh, uh, restart the app, watch. So the map's drawn, and then a minute later, the list of places is shown. And the reason for this is that it takes a minute for us to get in touch with the server, retrieve that information, and then display it on the map. The starting point for this is this call to get places right here in on resume. And to demonstrate that, let me comment it out. So I'll restart, um, I'll restart the app, and now no places are shown. Now we're gonna talk more about networking in Android on later checkpoints, but let me give you a little bit of an analogy. Because it can be slow to retrieve things over the network, sometimes you're on a slow connection or you might not have a very strong signal, what we do here is something that's called using a callback. So the main activity doesn't wait for the list of places to be available. It has the client go fetch it, but it says, when you're done, call me back. So maybe you've called like a call center once and they said, oh, the wait is two hours, but if you give us your number, we'll call you back when you know somebody's available to help you. This is the same pattern here. So rather than waiting, which could cause the app to hang, we register a callback and that callback is right here. So what the client does is it goes and it retrieves a list of places and when it has those ready, it contacts the main activity by calling this method. And that's where the list, that's how I get the list of places back. And so you'll see what gets passed to this method is a list of places. That place is just a standard Kotlin class, it's right here. Um, and we'll be doing some work with this uh, model in later checkpoints. Now, this is wrapped in this result might throw. You can read that class for more explanation about why that is. Um, and so now what I do is I get the list of places that is uh, part of this result might throw, and then I use it to update the UI. So now let me put some more logging here. I'll say log.i um, get places return, because this is how get place returns. It's a little weird to us. Um, but it doesn't return directly to the caller, it returns in this other way. So I'll run the app again. Um, oh wait, hold on a sec. Well, the other thing I wanna do, oh, I commented out update show in places. So now, sorry, let me run again. Watch the logs, entering on create, entering on resume, and then get places returns. So that happens later. First on resume runs, it says, hey, get some places, call me later when you're done and this accept callback is what's used. And we'll talk about this more and, and, and why this is in, in later checkpoints. Now, you'll see that right now, the UI is blank, and that's because I updated this call to update shown places. So that's the next method right here. This one I'm not gonna go through in a ton of detail. I will leave it to you to look at, you know, uh, and to figure out. We've tried to put in really good commentary to explain what's happening here. This takes that list of places and draws markers on the map at every location with some information about the place. Um, this is you know, using OpenStreetMap's Android library to every place where somebody said, this is my favorite place, we put a marker on the map. Um, and again, there's, there's reasonably good commentary about how this works. 
um, and you can go through it and ask questions if, if you have them. Okay, so let me uh, just go ahead and run the app one more time. I removed the commented out call to update list of shown places, and so now you'll see that those places are shown. Okay, so what we've done this walkthrough is you know, we've talked a little bit about logging, so how to add instrumentation to your application. We gave a sort of a, a high level overview of what an activity is in Android. Um, we use that logging capability to trace what's happening when our app starts up. We noticed that it's displaying a map. We looked a little bit about how that map's configured, like why it's zoomed in at a particular level, like where the boundaries are and things like this. And then we looked at where the data is coming from to show those places on the map, how that call is being done. All right, so what we'll do next is we'll talk a little bit about testing, like how your app is tested, how to interpret the results, and um, how to make forward progress on this and the other checkpoints.